According to ancient Chinese perception of the universe, a star called Zewei was eternally positioned at the summit of heaven, with other stars revolving around it in homage. This Zewei star is what we call the Pole Star, being at the center of heaven. It symbolizes the final residence of all Chinese emperors. Hence, the palace of the Ming and Qing dynasties was called Zijincheng which is an acronym for the Ziwei Star, the forbidden place to the common people and the walled city. During the numerous dynasties in China, wooden palaces were erected and destroyed one by one. Only the forbidden city has stood intact for over 500 years. Now it is China's most renowned traditional architecture and the largest museum which houses a rich treasure of historical relics and unique works of art. Welcome to the Palace Museum. Formerly the Forbidden City, the Grand Palace of the Ming and Qing Dynasty Emperors, this museum was established in 1925 and has received 10 millions of visitors annually from home and abroad. The vastness, the profound history and the opulent collections of the Palace Museum make it difficult for a full appreciation of its splendour, even if time allows. With this compact disc, however, you can tour the museum in an armchair, study the architecture of the Forbidden City, visit the personages of the last dynasty of China, and experience the life in the palace. You can appreciate at your own pace the imperial treasures and new collections of historical relics in this magnificent palace museum. This CDI disc is designed for simple use. There are many different sections in this program. You can select any section you like by pointing the cursor and clicking an action button on the remote control. There are several buttons that will appear in most of the menu screens. The main menu button allows you to go back to the main menu. The return button brings you back to the... The Forbidden City remained a heavily guarded imperial palace at the turn of this century. It was strictly out of bounds to the common people. This magnificent edifice served as the private stage for 491 years of China's imperial life. Over this extensive area of 720,000 square meters, emperors, nobles, and dignitaries each acted out their roles in comedies and tragedies of the years. From the ascendancy of the Ming Dynasty in 1421 to the fall of the last dynasty, the Qing, in 1911.
Like players in a silent masquerade, actors of every description appeared and disappeared, one after another. Legacies of the deceased remain, substantiating their existence. Even the worn-out stones on the palace floors still bear the footprints of dignitaries, eunuchs, palace maids, and people of noble birth. Imperial records reveal little about life in the palace and hardly anything of the lives of the Qing emperors and their consorts. How were the solemn and elaborate palace ceremonies conducted? How did the emperor, burdened by his crowded schedule, handle day-to-day -day administrative affairs? How did the emperor and his empress live? The Forbidden City preserves clues. Relics of all description are well kept within the palace, including everyday artifacts, utensils and vessels. Extremely rare in human history, these give us a true picture of the imperial life. Every morning after washing, the emperor first went to the Hall of Mental Cultivation. Emulating preceding emperors, he studied passages from imperial family history before breakfast. The emperor took his breakfast at eight. As his schedule was tight, he would leaf through his diary and memos to review his daily schedule while at the breakfast table. After this, the emperor granted audience to his ministers and discussed the affairs of state in the Hall of Mental Cultivation. When an imperial edict had to be issued, it would have been stamped with his huge jade seal. Dinner time. The emperor would read the morning memorandum soon after dinner. We special secretaries have to keep notes of everything Our Majesty did in the Imperial Records. 